Hello everyone. Once again, we have Sixto Paz Wells with us. Sixto is a contactee of the UFO phenomenon and an author of many books. And last time we met, he promised to come back and answer your questions. Sixto, first of all, thank you very much for being with us again. And there are a lot of people excited to have the opportunity to ask you some of their questions. Sixto mentions that the image on his background is of the desert of Chilca in Peru. And this is the location where he first saw the spaceship and the extraterrestrials. 46 and a half years ago. That's almost my age. So I would have been there about a year old with you if possible. Or maybe you were with us in spirit. I'd like to share with you that out of all the questions we received through social media and emails and whatnot, many of the people that were asking those questions are English speaking people, which really excites me because we are able to share this information to people that usually don't have the opportunity to be exposed to this. So if you're ready for the questions, we're going to begin. Perfect. Let's start. Irma Graciela Rubalcaba asks if Quetzalcoatl was an extraterrestrial being. First of all, Quetzalcoatl was many characters. However, legends and tales centralized him into one being. Quetzalcoatl, besides being one of the gods for the Mayas, Kukulkan, he was also even called by the Toltecas. He was a priest, so someone very spiritual, and he marked an era among the Mesoamerican cultures. But in reality, this was the spaceship on which these beings came, and it was cylinder-shaped, and that's why the serpent with feathers. And he was one of the avatars or spiritual guides that incarnate on Earth every so often, like Zoroastro or Buddha or others. Iris Paola Ruiz Cantu is asking if Jesus was not an extraterrestrial, why did he have to be conceived the way he was? By a virgin, by the Holy Ghost. This was because Jesus, during his three years of public life, had to be able to incorporate a being that is not from this material world, but an ultra-terrestrial. These beings is what we know as archangels or angels, but not the ones where we mistakenly thought extraterrestrials were angels or archangels, but the real, actual archangel beings. And these are real beings that do not have a material form or body. And in certain instances, under very special conditions, and not through just anyone, they can incorporate and manifest here on earth. Jesus prepared himself for 30 years of his life, and his preparation also came from previous lifetimes. And during the three years of his public life, there was a symbiosis of a being by the name of Mikael or Miguel merged with Jesus. And at the moment of the crucifixion, he separates himself from Jesus. So Jesus dies on the cross and it is Jesus that resuscitates. 
This was to allow both energies to coexist. First, this being that had evolved very highly from past lifetimes, with this superior entity that merged with Jesus. Irma Graciela Rubalcaba is asking who deciphers the agroglyphs. For example, who deciphered the message that was decoded saying the danger does not come from the aliens that are outside or coming from the outside. The danger lies within the aliens that are already on Earth. This was in binary code, which is a series of ones and zeros, silences and pulses. First of all, there is a group of investigators. They are dedicated to investigating these agroglyphs. There's Lucy Pringle, Colin Andrews, the now deceased Colin Lloyd. So a group of investigators that also reached out to experts in other disciplines, astrophysics, math, astronomy, to be able to decipher the agroglyphs and understand what they were referring to. There are times that you can have the agroglyph and not know what it means, but it's until something happens that allows you to understand it. For example, at the end of May, there was an agroglyph that appeared in Dorsal, England, the south of England, of this year, 2020, where there was an image that appeared with a few circles that looked like gears with 16 different wedges. So when you first see it, you might think it's a mechanical part or a motor piece. However, on September 1st, there is an anomaly that appears in Mexico above the city of Guanajuato. This happened at 10 kilometers from Guanajuato in a place called El Cubo. There was a huge cloud above this area and the satellites, when they photographed it from space, they saw a structure of 300 kilometers in diameter. And this spaceship had the shape of those circles with the 16 gears, just like the agroglyph. So one has to ask, how is it possible that a few months ahead of time were they able to announce that this was going to appear above Mexico? But in the moment when this agroglyph first was created or first was detected, you could not understand what it meant at the time. Manuel Blas is asking, do extraterrestrials create and play music like we do? Yes, they also compose music, play music, produce music, just like we do. They like music. And I ask, I wonder if they have a favorite band from Earth. And Sixto says, well, he doesn't know, but maybe we should ask him next time. Raimundo Boche is asking, why are there so many sightings nowadays? Because we are at the end of a cosmic cycle. The whole universe is subject to cycles. And our galaxy, our solar system, and Earth are at the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new one. And since they have been following the evolution process of our planet, and at this moment, since it's the end of a cycle where we are seeing climate change, higher seismic and volcanic activity, and this is due to a pulse that is emanating from the center of the galaxy and it is affecting the solar system and especially Earth. So they have been monitoring the different degrees of how it's affecting the planet. And also they're monitoring how much power human beings activate and the critical mass that all of us are able to reach 
to be able to channel all these disasters for them to be the least traumatic as possible. We are an extraterrestrial experiment, a genetic, sociologic, anthropologic, metaphysic experiment. That's why they are so interested in us. They want to see what we do, how we do it, and that's why there are so many spaceships right now. But also the presence of so many spaceships, it's a way to put pressure on the great powers, the nations of the world, because these countries have been controlled and manipulated by other extraterrestrials that were deported to Earth. And it's a way to keep them in check or prevent them from exceeding the evil they want to do. Brandon Cruz wants to know, are we alien descendants? Yes, naturally. Throughout humanity's history, there has been genetic manipulation, hybridization mixes, space shipwrecks, colonization, even deportation of extraterrestrials to our world. So we are a product of a little bit of all of these things. A person that goes by Anonymous is asking, what is the biggest detail that you can share with us from your experience with aliens? And he mentions that there is so much information online that he would like to hear something that would help him. First of all, they have said that prophecies have not been given for bad things to happen, but for these bad things not to happen. It's a way of warning for us to make corrections. If there was no way to change the future, where would the most sacred gift that we received from God, which is free will, be? They are letting us know that we have a potential with no limits. Also, that we live in a time outside of the real time of the universe. In 1986, they told us that inside of one of their spaceships, that we live in a paradox of temporal space. And now, that is one of the most recent discoveries by quantum physics, but back then, nobody talked about it. On the contrary, we were ridiculed and attacked for saying things like that. Also, the guides said that in Ganymedes, there are oceans as big as the oceans on Earth. Who would have imagined, what scientists would have imagined that in moons, not planets, we would find oceans as big as the ones on Earth? And they said this in 1974. Also in 1974, they said that the USA was not the first country to go to the moon. It was the Russians, the first one to land in the moon. And in 2016, the BBC of London had access to secret documents of the Soviet Union that confirmed this. Also, when the spaceship lands for the first time in front of us, the being that came down that had about two and a half meters height and had the appearance of a Nordic or Scandinavian, he mentally transmitted to them that he came from a planet by the name of Apu from the Alpha Centauri star about 4.2 light years from Earth from a binary system of two suns. Science has now discovered from 2012 and forward that the exoplanet that is closest to our solar system with similar conditions that could support life like our planet and this planet is at 4.2 light years of distance and it's interesting how these messages have been confirmed as time passes they said that climate change is not caused by man but by a pulse that is being generated by the center of the galaxy. And they said this in 1974. 
and we had to wait until November 2010, where the telescope Fermi of gamma rays detected the pulse of violet light coming from the center of the galaxy. To confirm that from the center of the galaxy and all centers of all galaxy emit these pulses. Very interesting. This makes me think you have shared with us that the extraterrestrials that live in Ganymedes and they are the ones that have shared with you that there are oceans there and that you have witnessed their way of life there. I wonder if Ganymedes is their home or is this like a station where they just arrive it's an artificial life station the atmosphere is not breathable for beings like us it's not that they look like us we look like them under the ice on the surface not the surface but under the surface is where there are oceans as big and large as the ones on Earth. And not only in Ganymedes, also in the moon Europa. Alfredo Lopez Castañeda is asking how many years, decades, or centuries have they been coming here and why? Well, they've been coming here since more than 1,200 million years ago. And they've been coming because 1,200 million years ago, our planet died due to meteorite strikes. These did not only cause extinction, but they devastated the world. They destroyed it. This turned Earth into dust. They received the authorization to create an alternative time, so that way the Earth could have a different outcome. They consider that time in the universe is like an ascending spiral. In one of the curves of this spiral, the Earth died, but the universe continued. So they traveled across space and time. They come to Earth before the Earth dies. They stop the Earth from dying. This creates an alternative timeline that has been wrapping around the real time of the universe. According to this, we live in a time-space paradox, in a time outside of the real time of space. To say this in the year 1986 was ridiculous. However, in 2014, Micho Kako, this American scientist from Japanese parents, declared that quantum physics confirmed that we are living in a hologram in a virtual reality and a simulation at a great scale. And in 2009, the gravitational waves detector in Hanover, Germany, the GEO 600, detected some echoes from the edge of space that led Carl Hogan to believe that we live in a hologram, a virtual reality. Alejandro Aguirre is asking, what is the objective of their visit? Their objective is to come out of an evolution plateau to create the conditions for a civilization to appear under a different evolution pattern where there exists an antagonic force that makes the evolution process very hard and at the same time to limit access to knowledge and information so that it cost us blood, sweat, and tears to access the information. So humanity has faced those two elements throughout history. And there are antagonic forces that exist whose only advantage is that while they know their limitations, we don't even know our possibilities. Richie Hecox is asking, are these aliens venebolous? First of all, there are approximately over 60 races that are coming to Earth. Extraterrestrial species and races. Now, not all of them have good intentions. Not all of them have bad intentions. 
there's a little bit of everything in the universe, just like there's a little bit of everything on Earth. However, currently, it is not too easy for the ones that don't have good intentions to act freely on Earth. There is a group of civilizations that are watching over Earth, protecting her. Gabriela Leal asks, Why are they coming to snoop on Earth? What caught their eye to be here? Well, first of all, they are civilizations that have advanced greatly mentally and technologically. But they did this sacrificing feelings and emotions. So they come here to experiment passion, emotions, feelings around us. The problem is that many times these passions and emotions easily get the best of them because they are not prepared to handle them. So there have been aliens that have made themselves being worshipped as gods. The ego, pride, and vanity has gone to their heads. There have been extraterrestrials that have feared us. They've seen us as a better and improved version of themselves. There are others that have been consumed by passion and they've had sexual relations with people from Earth, which should have never happened. And there have been extraterrestrials that have conspired against humanity. They did not want us to continue. And they've done everything they can to stop us from advancing. Maricela Melchor is asking if they have decades coming to Earth, why don't they make contact with people? It is said that people have seen them up close, but there's never proof. There is a lot of proof. In the case of our contact group, 10 times we have invited the press through messages that had the time and the date of when they would appear and the reporters have seen them. And not only that, reporters that have joined us have gone through Sendras, which are the interdimensional portals. So they have lived experiences that previously were only reserved for the contacted. And besides those 10 occasions where the press has been invited and they have witnessed that the contact is real and in effect, there has been five other occasions where the reporters invited themselves without us inviting them and they have witnessed the validity and veracity of the contact. Awesome. I like that they invite themselves. Jeremy Garcia is asking, what do you think about the theory that some aliens are humans from the future traveling in time through wormholes essentially traveling in time to the past to visit us. That is good for the Terminator movies, but not for reality. Why? Because there are entities that regulate and control who can travel in time. If they come here to Earth, is because an alternative time paradox has been created here. But you cannot travel to your past or a past before you existed and interact there because you would jeopardize your own existence in the future, creating a space-time paradox, a vicious cycle that you could never escape. They chose the Earth because the Earth didn't have a future. Our planet had been destroyed, so they gave it a second chance. And even so, we ended up creating a tremendous pandemonium because at the end, The alternative time getting closer to the real time due to the degree of interactions between them and us. There were limitations to interact. However, they went beyond those limits. And this has caused the alternative time to merge with the real time. And that is giving birth to a third time. And the concept of this alternative time outside of the real time is something that even the Aborigines or indigenous people like the Aborigines from Australia, the Anangu, they say that the Wanjima, 
the gods from the sky, created the heavens and earth. But they created earth in the Tugurpa, or the dream time, a time outside of the real time of the gods. Very interesting. Now, going off topic, I remember once that you said that each chakra represents a religion. Which chakra corresponds to what religion? For example, the violet lotus flower, which is Buddhism, which is the union, the fusion with the everything, the nirvana in the crown chakra. That would be Buddhism. In our forehead, we have the six-point star that represents the law of correspondence, the cosmic balance, the spiritual path, but inside the sacred geometry and knowledge and is the Star of David, Judaism. The Islam is the half moon on the throat. The cross, which is in the heart, represents Christianity. Why? Because what's fundamental about the Christic message is love and forgiveness. Then we have the circle, which represents Hinduism. And then we have the triangle and the square that represents science and the agnostics. Which, it's not that they don't believe in divinity, they just don't believe in anything that's established. And what's interesting about the square or the red cube that's related to science is that even to love, we have to learn. And since we're talking about chakras, which element corresponds to each chakra? First of all, the chakra around the coccyx and in the between legs is the element earth. And the colors that correspond are red and black. Then the chakra for the sexual organs, which is the orange triangle, represents the element water. The solar plexus, which is the yellow disc, like its name says, It is fire, solar plexus, fire. Then the cross with the four sides equal length with a bright green color is the element air, like plants, nature, trees, air. Then the half moon of a light blue color, the throat chakra is also air. Then The six-point star, the Star of David, it's a navy blue, and its element is water. And finally, in the crown chakra, the purple lotus flower represents the element fire. So it's fire in the crown, water on the forehead, air in the throat, air in the heart, fire in the solar plexus, water in the sexual organs, And finally, it's earth in the coccyx. So, earth, water, fire, air, air, water, fire. Thank you. Alejandro Aguirre is asking, is there a way to have a contact or to be able to see them? Naturally, yes. We recommend what helped us for the contact experience, which are breathing techniques, relaxation, concentration, and meditation. It also helps to have an adequate diet, put all stimulants aside. Within the contact groups, there is no consumption of any sacred plants or stimulants or drugs, or nothing of the sort. You don't need any of that to expand your conscience. And if you want to expand it artificially, you are putting yourself at risk of tearing the astral veils. And open yourself to companies or, or attacks that can even follow you from one life to the next. Well, then we have to be careful because a lot of people consider that those practices with something spiritual. 
Yes, people believe that spirituality can be light. We want fast food, but we don't want to get sick. We want a fast food type spirituality, but we don't want the consequences. Today, you don't have to be a hermit in the Himalayas to reach a state of enlightenment. But also, you can't stop meditating or doing some spiritual work. It would be like if I want to train for the Olympics, which is every four years, I have to train daily between eight and ten hours. I can't think that I can wait until three months till the competition and just use anabolics or steroids. That's cheating. And it doesn't work and it is harmful. It can open you to all kinds of attacks from beings of other dimensions or other planes. Ruben Aybar says, Since I was young, I have seen spaceships in daytime and nighttime. Some of them look like spheres. Some look like saucers. Is it that they want to contact me and I'm just not prepared? Yes, they are gradually preparing you. However, there are techniques or exercises that one can do to facilitate or sensibilize or predispose the contact experience. But try to do this in a group setting because with a group you strengthen the energy and the protection for the individual as well as the group. And can you tell us a little bit about the spaceships that Ruben is mentioning? Some in the form of a sphere, some uh, in the form of a saucer. First of all, there are about 167 different shapes of spaceships that are coming here to Earth. And the short-range spaceships, the ones that we know as flying saucers, on their underbelly, they carry these spheres that are anywhere from 30 centimeters to a meter and a half in diameter. And these are called caneplas or Foo Fighters. They are like remotely controlled cameras or drones, extraterrestrial drones. So there are spaceships in the form of a saucer, in form of spheres. Some have the shape of a cylinder or a half a moon of a delta wing. There are triangle or spaceships, some in the shape of a birthday cake, spaceships in the shape of a diamond, some in the shape of a pyramid, and some are totally rectangular, completely anti-aerodynamical. And there are those who can say, well, no, those are secret weapons from the U.S. But there are paintings from 500 years ago that already are showing these spaceships in the shapes of half moons and cylinders. Kati Maiz is asking, what can you tell us about the blood type RH negative? So the negative blood factor is the clue of the creators. It's the fingerprint of the crossbreeding between aliens and humans. That is proof that there has been sexual relations between extraterrestrials and humans from Earth. Because in the evolution of the human race, there are no preceding elements that explain this. This just appeared at a given point in history. Very interesting. She is also asking if this blood type is due to an experiment. This is due to the crossbreeding between extraterrestrials and human beings from Earth. She is also asking if it's possible that they created human beings with this blood type to make them slaves, like in Sumeria, like to mine their gold or something like that. We have to be very careful with those explanations that the extraterrestrials created the human race 450,000 years ago to replace the Ikiki that were some kind of alien biological androids in mines and things like that. Can you imagine a highly advanced society, technologically advanced, 
coming here to create human slaves or let's say an inferior species to work in mines. Nowadays mines are fully automated with robots, giant machines that extract the minerals and clean them, refine them and everything. We are going to create a humanity in a planet like this, coming from spaceships of high technology, so that with a pick and a shovel, they'll be extracting little pebbles. Please, that sort of explanation makes no sense. No, but it was the goal that they needed to control their atmosphere or recreate their atmosphere, which was deteriorating. Can you imagine? how much gold there is in the asteroids between Mars and Jupiter? So why come here and expose themselves and interfere? So not necessarily the explanations that have been given or have been interpreted have to necessarily be the correct ones. Richie Hecox asks, are they just observers or are they helping us with our ascension or evolution? Well, sometimes the best help is to not interfere. In the past, the relationship between them and us was like an adult with a child. When you're an adult, you enter their bedroom, sit on the side of their bed, read them a story, you dress them according to their age, you feed them according to their age. But when they become teenagers, they close their bedroom door, they don't allow anyone to come in, and God forbid that you tell them how to dress or when to eat. And currently, humanity is at a precocious adolescence. And the current relationship cannot be like it was in the past. They are waiting that on our own, we reach a responsible youth. Raimundo Boche is asking, Lately, there have been a lot of sightings on the moon and some say that it's an artificial base similar to the Death Star of Star Wars. What do you know about this? Well that's not so. The moon has almost as much water as the earth just in the moon's underground and there are craters on the surface with ice from water. When earth was in the process of formation it received meteorite impacts that tore a part of the inside from the earth and that came out and it cooled down becoming our moon. So the moon is a piece from the inside of earth that came out and cooled down. And do they have a base there? Yes, there has been extraterrestrial bases on the moon and a lot of space missions can account for that because they saw ruins on the surface of the moon. And currently they're not inhabited. Currently the bases are the same motherships. There are pictures taken by the Spirit rover and the Curiosity rover in Mars, as well as a space probe Phobos II sent by the Russians, where you can see a cylinder shaped object orbiting around Mars and an object that has 24 kilometers in length. It has been detected 1989, 2004 and 2014 and it continues to orbit around Mars. A cylinder shaped object of 24 kilometers in length. That one doesn't fit in my garage. Alejandro Aguirre is asking why don't they allow themselves to be seen or establish contact. They do let themselves be seen and they do establish contact. They select the people which they want to contact with, but not because any of them are better than the rest, but they know that through certain people they can reach more people. And he is also asking if there are any agreements between them and the people that rule the world. No, there isn't a secret agreement or pact between these gray aliens or the US government 
or any of the world powers. That is part of the politics of intoxicating information. The earth is in a type of quarantine and there are civilizations that are looking over the earth. They don't allow just anyone to come in. But once in a while, there is someone that gets through. Why would they risk to sneak in? Because they're trying to create hybrid bodies that would allow those that are trapped here in our planet to incarnate. Beings that have thousands of years deported here in our planet. And they are looking to incarnate in those bodies so that they can escape Earth. That is very interesting. I don't know if you can expand because the next question is, are they friends or are they looking to benefit from the relationship with humans? Can you also tell us the difference between those that were deported here and the other extraterrestrials that contact us? Yes, our planet was selected for a very special project. So it's had different stages. One of the most recent stages was 26,000 years ago, when two groups of civilizations, one that came from the Pleiades and the other one from Orion, they were assigned with the duty and responsibility to guard and look over Earth and to prevent anyone from tampering with the evolution of this planet. So the leader of the ones that came from Orion, this was a being that measured three meters in height, a being with the appearance of a reptile, a white reptile, which is considered a high hierarchy of these species. And this being considered that the human beings of Earth, because our planet was the only one out of the eight planets that were selected for this project, that still had good possibilities of fulfilling the original plan. But at some point, he considered that we were unpredictable and that we could jeopardize the cosmic order. So he wanted to boycott or sabotage the project of the cosmic plan. But not all the Guardians were in agreement, so th they ended up fighting amongst each other. And at the end, a group of dissidents were deported to Earth for bad behavior. So the dissidents are the ones that are deported and are here. There are two types of dissidents. One of them truly led a battle to stop the cosmic plan from continuing on this planet. And the others are a group of extraterrestrials that committed the grave transgression of having sexual intercourse with human beings. These were Pleiadians. Are these the ones that are referred to in different books as the fallen angels? Both of them are fallen angels. Some of them fell because of their pride and vanity, and the other ones due to sex or passion. Now, is there anything we can do to free ourselves from their negative influence, if that's the case? Naturally. The idea is to strengthen internally through breathing techniques, relaxation, concentration, and meditation. Also, Alejandro Aguirre is asking us, what are your thoughts on Salvador Freixedo? Well, Salvador Freixedo was an ex jesuist priest. He was excommunicated by the Catholic Church because he dared to question and criticize the church's postures. He wrote a book titled, My Church Sleeps, Parapsychology, Religion, and UFOs. He has written many books. Unfortunately, he has passed away already. He was a very wise and interesting man. However, he said that he was only interested in talking about the evil extraterrestrials, even while he knew that there were good extraterrestrials. Why is that? Well, because the church has always been trying to create fear. Fear of hell, fear of the fallen angels, eternal condemnation, and now trying to create fear in people regarding bad aliens that abduct, kidnap, and manipulate. But it's always trying to create fear. And we see that nowadays 
They have a campaign trying to terrorize us any way they can. Any way they can. That's correct. Richie Hecox is asking, are they from a higher dimension, appearing in our dimension? Yes, of course. We live in the material world of seven dimensions. And most humans, until December 21st of 2012, we were beings of 3, 3, third dimension physically and third dimension of the conscience. But we were being visited from extraterrestrials that are 4,4, 4, 4,5, 4, 4,6, 4, 5,6. The Galactic Council, our galaxy's government, the 24 ancient, are 6,6. 6. What does that mean? That these beings are moving in a very high spiritual level. There are extraterrestrials that are 5,5, 5, 5, 5,6, 4,4, 4,5, 4,6. There are different graduations of conscience levels. So it is them that are coming here. They are looking for, they select people that can potentially reach these high levels. Very good. Richie Hecox is also asking us, are they here for an event that will happen before December of 2020? They are here to follow all humanity through all its history because we ourselves are an extraordinary event for them. Can you explain to us? You've briefly talked about the cosmic plan. Can you explain what the cosmic plan is? Of course. First of all, this material universe that we live in of seven dimensions has had multiple creations. This is not the first and will not be the last. This material universe has been created by beings of a parallel universe, a mental universe. This is where the true angels, archangels, thrones, principalities, cherubs, seraphims, powers, denominations come from. These entities are called ultra-terrestrials. The ultra-terrestrials created the material universe. But this mental universe of the ultra-terrestrials was also created by another universe that is spiritual. And like I've mentioned, this material universe has had multiple creations. And on this last creation, the civilizations that started to flourish evolved a lot and in a very short span time. They advanced a lot, but they ended up being stuck evolution-wise. Why? Because they emphasized the mental part at the cost of sacrificing the emotional part, the feelings. So the idea to create the cosmic plan was to somehow inside creation change the patterns of experimentation, work, and planting. Choosing planets where there will be more importance given to the emotional part and feelings. Because in time that could make the difference and it will take them to learn things through us. Why? Because there is no one, no matter how wise they are, that doesn't have something to learn and no one so humble that they cannot teach something. The most humble person can teach just like the wisest person can learn. A good teacher is capable of learning through his students everything that his students can spontaneously teach him. Very good. And if I'm understanding correctly, when they decided to do the cosmic plan, to find a different chain of evolution compared to the existing one until that moment, to try to learn through emotions and feelings, instead of trying to do this through existing planets, because this would be like changing the rules of the game. I think you have mentioned this before. They looked for other planets such as Earth. Planets that didn't have a future. 
to not interrupt the natural process of other planets. So an alternative time was created and the work was done in this alternative time. And there were eight planets, eight planets that were selected, two per galaxy, four galaxies of a group of galaxies that orbit a central galaxy, which is M31, the great Andromeda Nebulos. And what happened with these eight planets? Of these other seven planets, because the eighth would be Earth, three destroyed themselves again completely. They all had the same process as the Earth. They had evolved or the conditions for life had been established, but then internal conflicts, meteorites, and they ended up destroying themselves. They were given a second chance and they destroyed themselves again. Three of them. Four, the extraterrestrials intervened so closely so that they wouldn't steer to the right or to the left so that the project would not fail, that at the end they ended up being a copy of their evolution process. In the present, all the attention is placed on Earth because we are like a better and improved version of everything previous. We are capable of reaching levels that no one imagined possible. That's why all the attention is placed on this planet today. Thank you very much. Now, they're asking how many races of extraterrestrials are visiting us, but you already answered that question. Yes, it's more than 60. More than 60 races. Thank you very much. Last time we spoke, you shared with us the first step to establish contact. And we have been taking heed as well as everyone that's watching. What is the second step that we can take to continue the journey and establish that? The basic, the first thing is to create a protection dome. Surround yourself with light to protect yourself against any negativity lurking. On the other hand, do breathing practices. Breathe through your nose using the diaphragm, your abdomen as bellows, as an accordion, so that when you breathe, you expand your abdomen forwards, not upwards. And as you're finishing to inhale, contract your abdomen to fill your lungs lower, middle, and upper areas. Then the relaxation allows you to concentrate such quantity of energy that allows you for a good relaxation. Eliminate all attention to the body and direct the attention to the mind so that you can concentrate. Focus your attention and concentrate. And finally, the fourth step is meditation. There are a lot of meditation techniques and it doesn't matter the technique. What's important is the attitude. If you believe what you are doing, you create the conditions for that to work. Very good. So we are now breathing correctly, relaxing, concentrating and meditating. What's next? Because you have mentioned that sometimes the difficult part is not to establish the contact, but to maintain the contact. What can we continue to do? For example, there was a question asking if they were still not ready. What could that person do to prepare itself? What can I do to ensure that I establish that contact and then I keep it and maintain it? My advice would be to try to gather in a group because the power of the group potentializes the connection. So a group of people getting together to do exercises of breathing, relaxation, concentration, and meditation, that establishes and truly activates the antennas. They are going to perceive that we are trying to contact them and they will come to that group to transmit the message and give us keys and directions because when you get to establish the experience the idea is for the experience to repeat itself that it continues not that it ends there like oh how pretty how how nice no that it should continue yeah very good and that would be the interesting the important because how cool to have the experience saying, oh, yeah, look, it is real. But how much better would it be to maintain the contact 
and to, I don't know, take our place in the universe eventually. Of course, and what's important is to become conscious that we are multidimensional beings, that through our seven bodies, not only do we connect to the seven dimensions of the material universe, but through the four elements, we can also connect with those parallel universes, with the mental universe and the spiritual universe. There are no limits. Very good. So for everyone that is watching us and that may be interested in being in touch with a contact group or gathering with other people, what advice would you have for them? How can they start? Or are there any existing contact groups that we can refer them to? Of course, in the U.S. there are many groups as well as worldwide. Simply send me a message to my email sixtopaswells at gmail.com and I'll send you who you can connect with that is closest to where you're at or in your country. Perfect, that would be fabulous. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be sending you. I also want to remind everyone that I wrote a book in English that can help as a guide to all the English speaking people. And this book is called The Invitation. That's a total of 21 written books until now. The last one called Egypt, The Door to Orion of Kolima Books Editorial. And where can they find these books? Where can they buy them? You can buy them at bookstores, but you can also find them online through Amazon Books or through www.editorialcolima.com. Very good. And for the people that want to follow you, I know you are giving meditation and workshops through the Zoom platform, just like we are chatting right now and you're doing these a few times a week, how can people sign up? How can they start down this path? Well, you can go to my Instagram, which is at Sixto Paz Wells, and in my biography, there's the notice or the ad of all the activities we are doing this week, how you can participate, how you can sign up, and you can also do so through my web page, www.sixtopazwells.com. And there you will find the information to all the activities. Out of all these contact experiences, what has been the most memorable thing? What you consider the most valuable or what you have liked the most? What I have liked the most is to receive an answer to all of our questions. That's what I've liked the most and a lot. And I know that the first messages that you received was through automatic writing. When we are gathered in groups, what instructions or guidelines can you give us to be able to do this correctly and effectively? Never forget about the protection dome. Don't forget about the four steps, which is breathing, relaxation, concentration, and meditation. And try to make meditation a constant and regular practice because that hyper sensibilizes us and it connects us to the universe and something that a lot of teachers agree on is the importance of meditation not once a year or whenever we take a shower but do it daily it's like if you have a radio it's not gonna work unless you turn it on and raise the antenna. If you don't do that, you're not going to be getting a station. It doesn't work by itself. And as far as the protection dome, can you tell us how we can protect ourselves before attempting to establish contact? And why is this important? First of all, we need to inhale and take a deep breath through our nose, expanding the abdomen forwards, not upwards, but forwards. And as we finish inhaling, we need to contract the abdomen to push the lower lungs, medium, and upper lungs. We raise our arms above our head 
we all take a deep inhale we inhale we retain the air and as we exhale through the nose we are going to be opening our arms drawing an arch and we're gonna feel how the energies from the universe are surrounding us in a protection dome in such way that nothing evil or nothing negative can prevail against us during this day, this week, this month, this year. But on the contrary, everything will be peace and harmony. And as we're doing this, we're going to visualize and imagine how the energies from the universe descend upon us in a spiral, entering through our crown, through our hands, and are surrounding us from the outside and the inside. We end up with our arms down, and we immediately take another breath, inhaling. Hold the air. We focus our attention in the crystal heart of the earth and our feet, and we start raising our arms, and we start to visualize how the energy starts ascending in a spiral through our legs, through our spine, and little by little we start realizing that we are protected by the energies from heaven and the energies from earth. And one last time we do this work again with one deep slow breath and we feel that not only do we consolidate the protection on us so that it lasts this day, this week, this month, this year, but we extend it to family, acquaintances, friends, your work centers, where you study, your homes. Now remember, the success of all this depends on knowing the seven laws, the seven universal principles. The first law that was taught by Hermes Trimegistro thousands of years back says that all is mental. So one can create what one believes. If you believe in positive things, you attract to your life positive situations or circumstances. But on the other hand, if you allow yourself to be taken by fatalism or pessimism and negativity, your life is going to be an exact reflection of that altered state of mind. That's why always positive mind. And somehow we have to believe it to create it. Not only is it the exercise or the ritual in itself. It's the conviction that you do it with. So we have to put our heart, our passion in it, and what you have mentioned, even they come to learn from us, the emotions and the feelings. Exactly, that's what it's all about. So there is a lot of power there. And to the people that believe that this thing of the emotions is immature or that that doesn't have any value like evolution until a few years back it was believed that the emotional part was like a very low level very primitive very immature of the human beings temperament or character and that as we grow the part of the emotions and feelings starts to get neutralized and you start becoming a little bit of a cynic and that's what's normal and that's what's right. And that's not the case. Today, there are classes in universities, there are international seminars at the highest levels that talk about the emotional intelligence, about the importance of putting your heart, your feelings into everything that you do. Express care, affection, that better integrates people and gives corporations better productivity and all the works that we do very good and now that many of us are in our homes can we still have reunions and are they effective if we do them like via zoom like we're doing you and I right now we have done group meditations and we have received communications from the guides in zoom type reunions and even our groups in Trujillo at the north of Peru 
have done practices with everyone connected from their home through computers and everything. And they have been able to materialize in the palms of their hands, the Sacio crystals. Wow. So it is possible. So to everyone that's watching us, get in touch with Sixto, anyone that's interested. Those of you that are in my area, get in touch with me and let's get together and let's practice all these teachings because talking about it sounds nice and everything, but what's important is to actually go and practice it. Totally agree. And the only thing left is to thank you for dedicating this time for us. Thank you, Fede. You're very kind. And thank you on behalf of all the people that got their answers to their questions, their unique and original custom questions. Anyways, always showing you the ambience of the Chilca Desert, which is 63 kilometers south from Lima. This is where we went with Juan Jose Benitez in 1974, and he witnessed the appearance of the spaceships in the sky. Fabulous background, historical. It's great that you share it with us. Thank you very much. And before I forget, I want to invite everyone that's watching us. One of your books is called Guías Prácticas, and that have the steps to contact. Yes, and you can find it through Amazon. It's called Guía Práctica para Grupo de Contacto. And there's another book called El Instructor del Nuevo Tiempo. Any last words that you have for our viewers or for me? Remember that at the end, we get to comprehend that the only contact that we truly need to have is the contact with ourselves and everything else, the contact with your significant other, with your family, with your children, with the universe, comes as a consequence of this experience of interior contact. Everything starts in us and through us. Then everybody start meditating and vibrating in love. Sixto, long distance hug for you, a fede hug. Thank you very much for the interview. Uh, we love you lots. We thank you for your time and we'll see you soon. Yes, of course. And our best to Marinita. Thank you. Bye bye.